today we're gonna be ranking every single Naruto villain, or at least the ones that are in this tier list, from, well, this category is here. We start at Godlike, and we move all the way down here to Kaguya. That's a bit of a spoiler, but let's get started with the tier list. And by the way, I reserve the right to change any position whenever I want, because I may change my mind. So let's get going. First off, Hidan. Hidan goes in... I would say good, it's pretty good, I like the character, I like his very creepy, uh, great foil for Shikamaru, cool personality, deserves a good position here, yep. Sasori, I would say good, but below Hidan, not as impactful, though his fight against Sakura and Chiyo is pretty cool. I'll leave Sasori here and good. Kitomaru, now we're getting to one of the sound four, interesting, they're not all together. I would say Kitomaru is also good. He is pretty decent. I would say he's one of the best in the sound for probably my favorite, to be honest. Okay, Jirobo. Jirobo goes in meh. It was uh, okay, whatever, man. He fought Choji. His motivations were flimsy at best. He was just a guy that wanted to eat and make fun of Choji because he was fat. But, I mean, he wasn't awful and the fight against Choji was cool. Karin. Is she a villain? Yeah, you could probably consider her a villain. Yeah, I would say she's... Pretty mad too, probably behind Jirobo. Karin never had much of a characterization, she only liked Sasuke, and that's about everything she did in the entire series, it's worse than Sakura, way worse. And also because she doesn't really have a lot of cool stuff, she doesn't even have a fight in the series that she's fighting alone against someone, so not very impactful character, not at all, so yeah, meh, probably, probably deserves it. Alright, pain. Hmm, well, I'll, I'll probably have to put him in here, right? Because it's kind of mandatory for you to put Pain in Godlike, he's an amazing villain, I don't really have to explain a lot, but just his relationship with Jiraiya, and then the fight against Naruto, him invading the Leaf Village, and also the themes of Pain and destruction that he brought into the Naruto story, challenging Naruto's beliefs. What are you gonna do about it? Are you gonna stop the cycle of hatred or are you gonna kill me? So, yeah, he's a great villain. I also like the ending, you know, people usually don't like very much that the Rina Tensei brings back everyone to the Leaf Village, people see that as a cop-out, but I actually think it makes a lot of sense for Naruto to save everyone by using Jiraiya's book. It's cool, it's really cool. So yeah, godlike, man. Obito... Uh, I'll put Obito in okay. Uh, if this was Obito with the mask on, he would definitely be higher. But this Obito right here, when he lost his mask, he essentially lost what I found appealing about him. In this state, Obito is much more of a Rin simp than anything else. Everything he's done is about Rin, and I've made a video about that. If you disagree, you can check that video out, because I explain actually pretty well why Obito did everything for Rin, and that was in his entire characterization. And to be honest, in the war arc, you know, after Obito lost his mask, I got tired of the Team Kakashi dynamic, you know, Rin, Obito, and Kakashi. Uh, it just, just tired me out, but still, I, there are some pretty cool moments with Obito. I would even say that the moment when Kakashi got his dual MS, it didn't make much sense, sure, but it was pretty cool to see Kakashi doing that, even though Obito had to send that from his grave. Okay, Kakuzu is... meh. <laughs> Um, Kakuzu is probably the, my least favorite Katsuki after Zetsu, of course. He likes money, that's about what he does. Oh, yeah, sure, he only appears in one arc, which doesn't really help, but he doesn't really leave a very lasting impression. Hidan is weaker than him, but still, he leaves a much bigger impression in the entire story than Kakuzu. Kakuzu is kind of forgettable, especially the way he got taken out was really, really easy by Naruto, just arriving and soloing Kakuzu with three shadow clones, um, blitzing him twice and all that. Not very impactful villain. Dater. Man, Dater is an amazing villain. I really like Dater. I like the art stuff behind him, the philosophy. He is kind of crazy, of course, but I just find it so interesting that this guy wants to show his art in this very twisted way. And yeah, his motivations may be pretty simplistic, but still, 
It's so compelling to see this guy trying to destroy everyone that dislikes or tries to diminish his art. Then he has those conversations with Sasori that are also very interesting. They really disagree about what art is like. And then we have the fight against Sasuke, which is probably one of my favorite fights in the shonen genre. Zabuza Momochi. Okay, Zabuza is amazing too. He's a very cool villain. He's the first one we get. He's the first guy that is taught Nojutsu by Naruto, and that sets the standard for the entire series. Zabuza finds his humanity after Naruto's words and after seeing Haku's sacrifice, he finally cries, maybe for the first time in his life, which is something extremely moving, and he was very intimidating when we saw him. I mean, I was a kid when I started watching Naruto and I watched this guy fighting Kakashi, I thought Kakashi was gonna die and I thought Kakashi was amazingly powerful. It was just so cool to see Zabuza and also the ending he gets with the tears and all that is very different from most of the other animes that you'll see, especially shown in anime, so yeah, definitely an amazing villain. Zetsu is Kaguya tier, absolute trash, because he essentially retcons the story and makes the story a thousand times worse because of that. Um, yeah, that's about it. If you want to see more, I have a video entirely about Zetsu's retcon, so definitely go check that one out, but he is awful. If he was just the Akatsuki intel guy, he would probably be meh or okay, but no, he is Kaguya tier. Awful. Absolutely horrendous. Indra. Pretty trash. I mean, I don't like the reincarnation stuff. And we don't have anything about him anyway, we just see one panel in the manga that he had as Susano, which I find kind of weird. I mean, they should have probably different powers all those years ago, but anyway, nobody cares. Okay, this is a filler guy from the Star Village. <sighs> trash. I don't know who this guy is, but he looks like trash. This guy was for the filler with Ibiki's brother? I don't remember this. I don't remember that I watched maybe a little bit of it, but probably, probably bad. This guy looks like trash, so he's... Go oh. Why are Boruto villains here? I don't want to rank Boruto because Boruto isn't canon, man. But yeah, this is trash, man. This is Onoki's grandson who's a robot or something like that. And he has a particle style and he can't do anything with particle style, which is probably the most OP normal ninjutsu that you can ever get. Uh, absolute trash. This girl that fights Sasuke in the film arc, trash. Itachi. So the thing is, Itachi, he is a villain up to a certain point, but then he becomes a good guy, and then we find out he was a good guy all along. So it's strange to rank him here, but I understand why he would be put in a villain tier list. Um, I would say probably amazing. I'd say behind Zabuza because when he was a villain, he was really damn cool. I really like the arc when he shows up in the Leaf Village for the first time, when you don't know he is a, a good guy, for instance. And he doesn't really show a lot in that arc, but it's very subdued, and I like that. I really love that initial part of the search for Tsunade arc. And also when Sasuke confronts him when we thought he was a villain and all that. So, really damn nice stuff. So I'll say he's amazing, not above that because, of course, he is not a real villain, but yeah. Dosu. Dosu is probably the coolest guy in the sound team during the tuning exams by far. He has the coolest design, though um, they don't really have a lot to do because they die pretty quickly. And then I know a lot of people wanted Dosu to do more stuff in the series. People even asked me to make him stay in the Naruto rewrite, but honestly, he served his purpose. He was there to make Sasuke and Gara look good, especially when Sasuke awakens the curse mark, and then he gets one shot by Gara, and we get afraid of Gara. He was essentially a jobber character with a little bit more of a pedigree, but still, he has a really cool design and probably the coolest personality in the sound team, so I'll leave it in good. I think it's fair. Who's this guy? I have no idea. Probably trash. Okay, the Nine Tails. I'll say the Nine Tails is great. The Nine Tails, when she was or he, I mean, people say, I don't know, man, what's Nine Tails' gender? People say it's a guy, but I kind of think it's a girl, but whatever. The Nine Tails was a villain for sure. Um, it killed Minato and Kushina. But then it became good, just like Itachi. But then, no, Itachi was different because Itachi was a good guy all along. The Nine Tails, you know, was Tokno Jutsu, like many others. 
And when the Nine Tails was a villain, it was much more of a force of nature than a proper character. You saw this thing as a menace, as something that could overtake Naruto at any moment and wreak havoc in the entire world. But it wasn't as though the Nine Tails had a lot of personality and nuance, so that's why it wouldn't be higher than this. It was simply a force of hatred, but still really damn cool. This guy is from the Asuma filler arc. Trash! This girl kissed Naruto uh, in the filler arc, so pretty trash. <laughs> uh, okay, Gato. Gato is actually a great villain. Um, this guy, he is probably the only guy in here that has no ninja powers whatsoever. But this is one of the cool things about this guy. He actually represented what the Naruto world looked like in the first arc of the series, which was extremely important. He was a gangster, a mafia guy, and he hired Zabuza to make sure the bridge wouldn't be built. Now, this guy was the worst. He was the scum of the world, man. And it was interesting because he really treated the ninjas that he hired as tools. And so did Zabuza. He treated Haku as a tool to a certain extent, but then... When Zabuza has that change of heart, he sees Gato as the real demon that he is, and then Zabuza shed his tears. It it's great. This guy is important for the series. He may not be very remarkable, and he may not even be a shinobi, but he is important, and what he represents is also very cool for the story. And also his death is awesome too. I mean, Zabuza with a kunai in his mouth beheading the guy, that's gruesome and cool. Um, I don't know who this guy is. Okay, Ginkaku and Kinkaku are bad. Um, I wouldn't say they're trash, but they are pretty close. They killed Tobirama, apparently. I mean, these that's the only thing these guys have ever done. They've been swallowed by the nine tails as well and that's about it they are kind of whack nobody really cares about them i don't like their designs at all i think that the whiskers that try to mimic the nine tails design they don't look good in these guys they look good in naruto but not in these guys so yeah they're they're not good man um the the part they are in in the war arc is also probably the least favorite part of, of many people in the entire series so, yeah, uh, I don't know who this guy is. Uh, I don't know who this one is. Pfft. Haku. I would say Haku is great. Um, I wouldn't rank Haku as high as Zabuza. Probably just because of preference. But Haku is the secondary villain in that arc. He sacrifices himself for Zabuza, and that's what prompts Zabuza to have that change of heart, too, on top of Naruto's words. Still, Zabuza's great. Uh, I wouldn't put it in amazing. I'm trying to spread out the characters here so that it doesn't get too clustered. I mean, trash spreading pretty clustered. But you can see it's mostly Boruto or filler characters, so anyway. But yeah, Haku, definitely, definitely a great character. And the fight against Naruto when Naruto unleashes the Nine Tails for the first time for real is intense. When he says to Naruto, yeah, we could have been friends in another life, and then Naruto goes and tries to kill him, but then he sees Zabuza in danger, and then, yeah, that, that's all pretty good stuff. I mean, the Land of the Waves arc is a classic, so there's nothing to say about it. Hanzo! Ah, Min, Hanzo, who cares about Hanzo, man? Um... It's pretty bad. Like, he is just one of those characters you hear about. It's just like Kinkaku and Ginkaku, though. I'll say he has a better design than those other characters, for sure. Uh, because uh, he looks cool with that mask, but he doesn't have much more than that. The only time we actually get to see him is when he deems the Sanin, the Sanin, and then, very briefly, during the war arc, when he fights Mifune. Wow, man, Mifune, what a great character as well. But he doesn't get too much stuff, he's just a guy that's there so that Pain can go and destroy him and then take over the Rain Village. So yeah, well, he's there. Danzo. Danzo is an amazing villain. He is one of those characters that I really, really enjoy because you can see the great. And I know a lot of people are gonna say, no, Danzo's the worst, there's nothing good about Danzo. But no, you have to analyze the character more properly. He is a guy that has no breaks when it comes to protect the Leaf Village. He'll do whatever it takes. However, he has the good of the village in his heart. 
His methods may be really, really rough and bad, and you can disagree with him, as you should, but I like these characters that have a gray morality. Of course, Don's morality tends way more towards black than white, but anyway, he is great. The only problem is that Donzo should have been introduced much earlier in the series because it doesn't really make sense for him to only appear in Naruto Shippuden. Think about it, he should have appeared for the first time when Hiruzen died. And even before that, it would have been interesting to see Donzo and Hiruzen actually interact in the series and set up Donzo as a more credible threat in Naruto Shippuden. He's always in the shadows, yes but I think he could have played a bigger role in the story, and that's why he is not in the godlike status. However, what he does in the series as is, is already good enough to put in him amazing. Okay, Nagato. Oh, okay, we did pain. I guess Nagato is probably the same, though I'll probably put him in amazing, not godlike, because the actual godlike stuff we saw from Nagato was when he was utilizing pain, and if we are splitting those two characters, I would say Nagato isn't as impactful as Pain, but still an amazing character. We see Nagato's backstory, we see how he stomped Danzo using that ethereal Renegon Dragon, pretty cool stuff. So yeah, uh, I've talked about Pain already, Nagato's pretty much the same person, just the one pulling the strings, but I'll say he goes in amazing because he's not as godlike as Pain himself. Okay, Dark Naruto. I wouldn't imagine this to be um, a villain. I would say he's okay. He represents the dark side of Naruto, and that's something everyone has. You know, demons that you have to deal with, and Naruto certainly has those as well. The problem with the scene when Naruto confronts his darker self is that the dark Naruto implies that Naruto hated the villagers for what they've done to him, you know, ostracizing him because of the Nine Tails his entire life. But we never really see Naruto really hating them. Sure, he doesn't like that he is, you know, alone the entire time and people don't like him, but we don't see that deep resentment that is implied in that scene, and that's why I think it falls a little bit short. But anyway, I don't think it's a bad idea to include this in the series, and okay, suits this character just fine, if you could even call it a character, it's just a facet of Naruto. Okay, we have Boo. Um, I mean, he's pretty meh, to be honest. I like, kinda like his fight against Obito, to be honest. It's cool to see how Obito deals with lower tier shinobis, even though they are supposed to be very high jonin level, still they're not nearly as powerful as Obito and they cannot deal with him, of course. But anyway, um, he's just there to be Danzo's escort, it's never really meant for this guy to do anything else in the story other than die, and then to uh, be used as the explanation for the Edo Tensei Jutsu during the war arc. Okay, Orange Mask, Obito slash Toby is godlike. Because, well, this character here, he starts off as a goofball, and he is the funniest character in the series, there is no one that's even close to him. And the scene when he reveals that he is quote-unquote Madara Uchiha to pain, and then the lightning flashes in the background, I love that scene so much. And the reason I like Obito way more in here, then in here is definitely because Obito was essentially Madara. He was really playing his role very well. He wasn't Obito when he had the mask. He literally was Madara Uchiha. And I find that way more compelling. He is essentially acting on the will of the god of his clan and one of the most powerful shinobis of all time. And also, I'm pretty biased towards Madara, I'm not gonna lie. The masked man that fought. Minato is probably the same character as Orange Mask, Obito, but if we are splitting those two characters, I'll, I'll just put him below him because he appears for a couple of minutes in the story, essentially, like two or three chapters and goes away. But still, I think he's probably, you know, this place suits him pretty well. I don't know who this person is. Momoshiki obviously goes into Kaguya because Otsutsukis are absolutely awful and they've ruined the entire story, if you don't forget they exist. Um, for many, many reasons. I mean, who wants to see aliens in your Naruto? No one. Okay, Kabuto in the war arc. Um, yeah, he's okay. He's okay. I'd say I, I like him better than Obito. 
Sure, it, it's not bad to see Kabuto's backstory in the orphanage and stuff like that. And then we have that scene with the two shinobis in the other side of the world that they are also orphans when we resolve Kabuto's story. But it's Kabuto, I don't care about Kabuto, whatever, man. I don't really want to see his backstory. Um, it could have been Orochimaru. Honestly, Orochimaru in that place would have been much better than just Kabuto because Orochimaru was way more developed before him. He was much more menacing. Kabuto should have stayed as Orochimaru's henchman. I don't detest Kabuto in the work, but I think there were better things to be done. I don't know who this guy is. The Tentails. Um, the Tentails isn't even a villain, to be honest. You see that um, the tree itself, and also the Tentails, it's a force of nature, quite literally. It's not even like the Nine Tails, where, where it's a force of nature, metaphorically. Because the Tentails has no will of its own. It just wants to get the chakra back. But I guess you could say that's a villain, but... You know... Uh, I'll say it's good. Probably, I mean, it's just a big piece of chakra that can be used as a weapon. And unlike the other tail beasts, this one has no personality. And honestly, what this amounts to in the end is Kaguya and the Otsutsugi, so I'll probably say it's mad just because of that. Um, yeah. Kabuto, normal Kabuto as a henchman, I'd say he is good. Probably above Kitomaru, because yeah, he was kinda cool in the story, you know, in the beginning at least, when he showed up, being that double agent. And then when he betrays Naruto and everyone, Naruto Rasengan's him in one of the most emotional scenes in the series. I mean, when Naruto learns and shoots his first Rasengan on Kabuto, that's a really amazing scene. So yeah, I, I think he deserves this place. You yeah, know, pretty pretty solid here. Oh yeah, this is War Kabuto. I'll just put him in the same position. I mean, it doesn't really matter if he learns Sage Mode here and if he's normal here. I would still prefer Ochimaru in this position. But anyway, I don't know who this person is. Oh okay, Kaguya obviously goes in the Kaguya tier. <laughs> she is the worst character in fiction. So yeah, there's nothing much to explain. She takes the place of Madara, who was thoroughly developed, was an amazing character with a gripping motivation, and she is a piece of cardboard in terms of personality motivations. And she is an alien that I dislike completely, and that doesn't fit in the Naruto story. And then she's also the gateway for Boruto, so she deserves this position very much. Kimimaro. I'll put him here too. Right next to Kitomaru. I think this is a fitting place for him. I mean, Kimimaru is essentially the same character as Haku, but he was done later. Though I kind of like his jutsus more than Haku, but still... I don't like the trope of a character dying of a sickness. With Kimimaru has done decently well because it showed his will to go and protect Lord Orochimaru, even though Orochimaru is a very bad person. You see that he is completely brainwashed and really used as a tool for his powers. That's pretty interesting, but nothing more than that. I mean, he appeared for, what, uh, five or ten chapters at most. So yeah, a good character. Shin, 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 this guy here, obviously, Kaguya tier. Kin, um, I put Dosu here, I'll say she's okay, she's definitely not as cool as Dosu, I like the way she is, um, you know, used as the Edo Tensei sacrificed by Orochimaru, that's pretty evil, but that's mostly uh, cool for Orochimaru's part, and I don't mean cool in that, that I like that, but I like for the story, if that makes sense, but other than that, Kin doesn't really do much, yeah, Kisame, I'll put Kisame in great. I really think Kisame is really cool, man. I like his design, I like his motivations. Actually, no, I'll put him in amazing, um, because I just remember his death scene. His death scene is awesome. I mean, this guy is the peak of loyalty. This guy was willing to let himself get eaten by the shark so that the Leaf Village wouldn't find out information about him, the Akatsuki, their plans and all that. I really like Hisame, he's a great character, even though he doesn't appear for too much, and a lot of the times when he appeared, he was overshadowed by Itachi, but he's still a really cool guy. Conan is... Where is Conan here? Probably meh. Honestly, she doesn't do a lot. She definitely is way more in pain shadow than Kisame and Itachi's shadow, but 
Um, no, I think she's okay, honestly, because I really like her death scene. Her her death scene elevates her to an okay character. First, her fight against Obito is actually cool, the way she uses the paper ocean, and then when she dies and her paper gets drenched on her own blood and then flies over to where Jiraiya's and Nagato's and Yahiko's papers were as well. That, that was a really touching scene, but other than that, she is kind of there. She could have been more explored in the story, if that makes sense. I think that would have been a little bit more interesting. I mean, I'm not asking for an arc solely focused on her, but I guess, you know, there are some characters who simply cannot really do everything to them, because there's just so much time in the story. Manda... Manda's okay, I guess. Orochimaru summons Manda for the first time in the deadlock. And then Manda's, you know, pretty menacing. I'm gonna eat you. It's implied that Manda is actually stronger than Orochimaru because Kabuto's pretty terrified when he realizes that Orochimaru summoned Manda. But still, that's pretty much it. Manda appears one more time when Sasuke uses it to escape Deidara's blast. And that's about it. Sasuke Uchiha. Well, if you treat Sasuke as a villain, which I think it's fair, he is a godlike villain. He is the foil to Naruto, the main rival. And honestly, if Sasuke wasn't who he is, if Sasuke didn't leave the Leaf Village, Naruto would have been a completely different series. Sasuke really identifies what Naruto is about, what Naruto has to even strive for. Naruto, the character, of course, everything he has to do, get revenge on Itachi, then finding out Itachi was actually a good guy, then he gets revenge in the Leaf Village, then he realizes, oh no, it's not even the Leaf Village that's wrong here. The entire system is wrong. I have to rewrite the system and revolutionize the world so that what happened to Itachi and to me will never happen to anybody else ever again. So, Sasuke is a god tier villain above pain. Uh, Menma. I mean, I don't know why people care so much about Menma. Um, whatever, man, it's trash. Mizuki is an important villain. Uh, he's the first villain, of course, in chapter one. Um, I wouldn't say he's great because, you know, he is not that three dimensional, but he symbolizes what Naruto has to defeat in his entire journey. This person that wants to take advantage, this person that thinks of shinobis as tools, he uses Naruto as a tool to get the scroll of the Shadow Clone Jutsu and all that, but he is definitely not a great character, but he's a good introductory villain. I would say he's probably in the good tier. Okay, I don't know who this guy is. Whoever cares. I don't know who this guy is either. This guy's from the Ice movie. I don't care. Orochimaru. Okay. This is interesting because Orochimaru was the main villain in part one. He was definitely the one who impacted the story the most. And his relevance and his you know, coolness and everything kind of changes in Naruto Shippuden, especially after he gets defeated by Sasuke. When he comes back, which is something you'd expect because he's a snake, he's always going to return. I mean, he doesn't do much, to be honest, and he's not that Orochimaru we knew and love. He kind of turns into a vanilla Orochimaru. So, if I were to just rank Orochimaru for part one, I'd say he's godlike. But I'll put him in the bottom of Amazing just because... No, actually, I'll put him above Itachi um, as a villain because... He is still pretty damn amazing in part one, and he leaves much more of an impact than Itachi, and also Kisame for sure. It's just that he kind of falls apart in Naruto Shippuden, especially in the war arc, and his arc is never really resolved. And I guess you could say that's a thing you could do with a character like Orochimaru, but I'd like something different for him. It's just my taste. Raido, um, probably bad. Don't remember him very much for the floor arc. I don't know who this guy is. I don't know who this guy is. Sakon, I'll put him behind Kitomaru. I like him... I don't know, I like Kitomaru better than Sakon. Though his powers are pretty cool too. I mean, being able to split your body with your twin, that's creepy, of course. 
and he is treated as the leader, and Kabuto even mentions he's the strongest sound for, but I disagree, I think Kibdo Mara is stronger than him, but still, um, yeah, he is uh, good. Next one, I don't know who this one is, I don't know who this one is, okay, Shukaku, um, he's okay, I guess, he appears for not very long, and then he's not a villain in the war arc anymore, nah, he's probably good. Honestly, he's fine. I like the way he is used with Gara, but of course, Gara is the more relevant character there. Suigetsu. I'll say Suigetsu is probably above Karin just because of what he did in the fight against B. He was willing to sacrifice himself using that really big water style jutsu, and I think that was the best moment of the character. Even though he never was supposed to be the guy that sacrificed himself for the team. He even thinks that in the middle of the fight, he's like, okay, I guess I'll do it. And he was willing to take a Bijudama to the face. That's probably the coolest moment, but still not a great impression. He leaves, well, it's a decent character. Tayuya. I'll say she's probably in okay too. Um, she's an interesting fight for Shikamaru, but other than just being really annoying <laughs> to the other Sound 4 members, she doesn't have much going for her. Jugo! I'll put him behind Suigetsu in the okay tier as well. Jugo's kind of interesting when he has those lapses of craziness that Sasuke has to contain, but other than that, he is a very one-note character. He's always serene when he is not consumed by the curse mark. And that's about it. Um, he doesn't really get too much to do anyway. Okay, the pseudo Raikage. No, this guy was never meant to be the Raikage. Even though people say he was, you know, in the flashbacks with Neji and Hinata, that he was the leader of the Cloud Village. It was supposed to be much more of a high tier ninja, and I think it makes sense. It doesn't really contradict too much when we get introduced to A, but. No, he's just a plot device for Neji's backstory, so he's meh. There's nothing for this guy. Torune is also pretty meh. Um, he's the same as Fu. They're essentially the same characters, but with different power sets and slightly different personalities, but they serve the same purpose in the story. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Gara is godlike. When he was a villain, of course, because then he is talk no jutsu but... Gara is essentially the perfect villain. He is absolutely menacing. His fights are great, especially Rock Lee versus Gara and then Sasuke versus. I mean, every single fight he's in, honestly. It's just his motivation. I need to kill people to feel that I exist, that I'm alive. This is what motivates me. It's so creepy and interesting at the same time. And then we get to know his past. We understand why he thinks that. And when Naruto brings him back, it's just like with Zabuza, but I think Gara is even more impactful because with Gara we see more of him. We get his backstory more thoroughly fleshed out, and we see him doing all those horrific things. And then when Naruto extends his hand and says, No man, you shouldn't be alone. That's an amazing moment. I really like Gara as a villain, and I think he deserves godlike. White Setsu, this is the mast of them all. I mean, it's the fodder guy that's fighting against everyone in the Shinobi Alliance. Nobody cares. Enzaku is probably okay. Bottom of okay tier. He's there. He is, serves his purpose. He's stomped by Sasuke. And that's pretty much it. And I just realized something. Where is Madara Uchiha? Who did this tier list? What? Come on! You didn't put Madara here? Just for the record, Madara would be above Sasuke in the god tier. He would be the god of the gods in the god tier. Why isn't Madara in the tier list? Why? Okay, let me calm down. Pretend Madara is above Sasuke in the god tier. Madara was hyped up ever since the Valley of the End fight between Sasuke and Naruto. And when he is more, well, not even introduced, but talked about in Naruto Shippuden, this hype created around Madara was just something we were eager to see pay off, and it did in the war arc when Madara shows up. 
My favorite chapter of the Naruto manga is chapter 63, where they explain Madara and Hashirama's flashback through Hashirama's perspective, which is genius. That whole backstory is simply amazing. I love that so much. But why isn't Madara in this tier list? I mean, sure, he got stabbed in the back by Black Setsu in the worst scene ever written in fiction just because Boruto needed to exist. But I, I always wipe that out of my mind and I just remember the good things about Madara. And yeah, he's got here, for sure. And he isn't here! Why isn't Madara here? <sighs> okay, that's frustrating, but nevertheless, like this video if you enjoyed it. Please, it's been a long video. If you stick around this long, subscribe to the channel as well and watch this other video right here for more entertaining Naruto content. Thank you so much for watching.